day, everybody. Meteorologist Mark Mulner here. I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern on what could become Tropical Storm Alex. Yep, this big old blob of moisture down here into the Southern Caribbean. This is what could become Tropical Storm Alex in the coming days as it skips along the Central American coast. What is the GFS doing once it brings it to the opening into the Gulf of Mexico? Is this going to become a hurricane? And what direction is this storm going to head? Florida? or the Eastern Gulf, or the Central Gulf. I'll break it all down for you in this special tropical edition of Weather Eastern. All right, so taking a look at the tropical update highlights here. Uh, this is important to note. This is after, you know, the National Hurricane Center's five-day outlook. So this is beyond, this is May 21st to the 24th. I have a 20% chance here into the yellow of development, a 40% chance here into the orange uh, between May 21st and 24th. And the area to watch, I know many of you in the Gulf of Mexico have been asking me, what areas should be watching this system? It's too early to say where this is going to make landfall, although the GFS is kind of making up its mind at this point. It's interesting to note, you know, that's more than 200 hours out, so the margin of error could be great. But the pattern is there for the system if it does move into the Gulf of Mexico for it to steer a little bit further to the east. But everybody from South Florida to southeastern Louisiana should be watching this storm very closely over the next several days. And I'm sure, you know, as this once this system initializes in the Caribbean, we'll have a much better idea of where this storm will head uh, with time. The GFS is further east, and of course the Euro, as usual, is a bit further west here. Let's take a look at the models. All right, so we're starting again with the GFS, the same model I was showing you at the beginning of the segment. There's that blob of showers and thunderstorms Wednesday, May 18th here. So as we put this into motion, yep, it's going to skip up along the coastline. That's the GFS has been pretty consistent with that, bringing it, you know, just uh, interacting with some land here. So there's going to be you know, it's going to slow down the strengthening process, but it's been pretty consistent with bringing it to near hurricane level here as it enters the southern Gulf. This is right around Monday, May 23rd. So what happens beyond here? Well, I caution you because the margin of error is so great. Actually, let's go back to the Caribbean here because I want to show you the factors at work here. So, you know, there is high pressure to the east here. It's mainly off the screen, so it's pretty far to the east so this is going to be flowing around the outer periphery of high pressure and by days eight and nine next weekend into early the following week there's going to be a system up here across the southeast and into texas and that might help to steer the system a little bit further to the east here so if we go up into the gulf of mexico here take a look and see what the gfs does now i caution you because we're approaching 200 hours here which the margin of error is significantly great is it going to head across South Florida, Central Florida, or the Panhandle of Florida, or up to affect southeastern Louisiana or Mississippi and Alabama. Well, let's see what the GFS does, because it's been skipping around to the east and to the west. It brings it up to Tuesday, May 24th, just west of Tampa as a pretty formidable hurricane, and then brings it landfall just north of Tampa, which would be a very bad track for Tampa. But I caution you on this because, and then of course it brings it up the U.S. East Coast. This is so far out, the margin of error could be great. And as I said in my you know, frame beforehand, everybody in the Eastern Gulf and North Central Gulf should be watching this system. So let's look at the Euro. So if we take a look at the Euro, the Euro does pick up on the system, but it is much further south. I'll show you the initialization just before hour 51 here, right over the Southern Caribbean. And ultimately what this means is this system is going to be allowed to push into the Central American mountains here. You can see the moisture uh, by Tuesday, May 17th. The system pretty much pushing to the west. And as you can see, it tries to reemerge it by Thursday, May 19th, towards the eastern Pacific here. So we'll watch this solution. The Euro is a little bit further south and west with this high-pressure system, which would naturally push the system much further to the west here than the GFS has it. But so far... The GFS has been, you know, further east and towards the center of the envelope here. All right, so taking a look at the GFS, thanks to tropical tidbits here, the entire Atlantic Ocean. There's that high-pressure system, so right around the outer periphery here. That is what we're going to watch here for the GFS. There's that development area. So as we head throughout the week, what's going to happen to the placement of these highs and lows and troughs? Well, you can see... We head towards May 15th here. 
you can start to see the initialization here of the low, as I showed you in the more zoomed in solution here. Uh, but as we take a look here, there's that high pressure system slowly drifting towards the southwest. There's Bermuda. So originally at the beginning of the week, it was right over here. And now it's drifting more towards the southwest. So this is pushing the system a little bit further to the west than what it was, say, yesterday on the model solutions. So it brings it up to the Gulf of Mexico like this. So we have two cell high pressure systems here. And we have that trough developing in the central plains. That is what's going to help steer this system if it does get to this point uh, between Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula uh, by about, this is uh, May 15th. So as we continue to push this system, there's that trough strengthening here across the Texas area, helping to steer the system further to the east. You have a blocking high up here in the northeast, and then the other high slowly retreating here towards the northeast, the Bermuda High. So as we continue throughout the week, making landfall, like I showed you, that trough, this is why it swings it to the east, because this trough helps steer the system more on an easterly track. Now, initially, we have a blocking high up here into the northeast, and what happens with that system? Well, according to the GFS, that blocking high helps the system take a left turn up the spine of the Appalachians and slowly starts combining with this low pressure here in the plains. So this would be a big old mess if this solution happens. To caution you, this is 240, 246 hours out. So a lot can happen between now and then. All right, so if we to get into sea surface temperature anomalies here, we are still running well above average here into the Gulf, anywhere from about a degree Celsius, even upwards of 2, 2.5 Celsius here into the eastern Gulf. There is an area that's a little bit normal here on the western edge of Florida, which has been warming up in past uh, days here. But take a look at the east coast here. This is where we had all that upwelling with all of those winds from that coastal low that stirred up all of this colder water. So, you know, that'll slowly warm up here too as well. But look at down here into the Caribbean. This is where we have a lot of uh, heat content as well. So you got these two areas. Um, if this system just stays over these high sea surface temperature anomalies, this system will be able to strengthen once it initializes. All right, take a look at the northeast here for you Monday. This is going to be the problem spot, particularly between 2 p.m. and 10 p.m. on Monday afternoon and evening hours. Uh, places like Syracuse, Binghamton, Scranton, Harrisburg, down to D.C., Philadelphia, Albany area, anywhere in this red shading, this is where you're going to see the highest risk of tornadoes and microburst type thunderstorms. So supercell thunderstorms and then a linear line forming along this front uh, to the west. So um, we're going to get a one-two punch here uh, from 2 p.m. onward um, with the tornado threat being later afternoon, early evening hours at its peak. Uh, if you, so if you're in eastern Pennsylvania, eastern Maryland, extreme eastern Virginia, uh, parts of northern and central uh, Delaware here, western New Jersey, into the Catskills, Poconos, western Hudson Valley here, and up into the Susquehanna River Valley and even the Mohawk River Valley here. You're going to be looking at the possibility, damaging wind, large hail, isolated tornadoes, uh, microburst potential, dangerous, deadly cl cloud to ground lightning here. So at this point, uh, definitely heed any watches or warnings, e even if you're in the orange zone here. This is a rather large zone as well, uh, enhanced risk. You're going to be in a tremendous amount of thunderstorm development during your day on Monday. So the conditions are coming together for probably one of your biggest severe weather days in upstate New York, Pennsylvania, uh, eastern Maryland and Virginia, Delaware, New Jersey, and maybe even getting into parts of western New England by the evening, later evening hours here, and then throughout the rest of New England here uh, as we head towards, you know, 7, 8, 9, 10 p.m. here. So watch out for this. This is going to be the big story uh, for your day on Monday. So heed those watches and warnings as this cold front plows into this very unstable air mass here. And we're going to get a lot of explosive thunderstorm development. All right, take a look at the NAM 3 kilometer for the severe weather outlook for the northeast for your Monday. Uh, let's, uh, let's get into, here we go, Pittsburgh area, just south of Erie. This is right around Monday, right around sunrise here. So as we head throughout the morning hours, that line is going to solidify as it gets into more daytime heating here. We're going to have to watch this area. You can see showers and thunderstorms right around the State College area, Bradford area, down to Altoona and Johnstown, just east of there. And as we head throughout the early afternoon here, it moves through the Williamsport area, up through uh, Olean, New York, 
and then it's getting through right around Harrisburg here. So some of these could be pretty severe by this point, even this early in the day. And as we head throughout the early afternoon, this pivots towards Elmira, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton. Look at this. This is getting into the 1, 2, 3 p.m. time frame. Strong to severe thunderstorms, Syracuse, Penyan, Ithaca, Elmira, Binghamton, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, just east of Harrisburg, getting towards Allentown, just west of uh, Philadelphia. And look at this, even getting into D.C. and Baltimore here uh, by this time. So if we continue to put this into motion, you can see we're even going to have some secondary cells fire behind this main line. So you're going to want to continue to watch this, even some cells firing back here throughout parts of eastern Michigan and Ohio. This won't be severe. Uh, but we'll have to watch for the continued support of stronger thunderstorm development. And look at supercell development heading, uh, developing all throughout eastern New York, uh, parts of New Jersey, Long Island, and into New England here. So as we head throughout the afternoon, look at this, another line trying to form behind this. So the atmosphere is definitely going to be primed here. I'm going to show you the convective available potential energy momentarily here. Take a look at this. this let me back that up just slightly. Take a look at that, you know, heading into the... Late afternoon, early evening, we continue with this area of showers and thunderstorms. You know, there's a tornado threat as well with this. Microburst winds, damaging winds in excess of 70 miles per hour. Large hail, one inch in diameter or larger. So we continue throughout the evening. And that, thankfully, a lot of these become below severe levels as we get into early Tuesday morning there. See that low pressure system? It's pretty much by this time pulling out into northern New England. All right, so if we look at the rapid refresh model, we're going to take it through Monday morning here. Let's see how similar it is to the NAM 3 kilometer. Well, it's a little bit it's a little bit slower here. Here we go. Moving through Pittsburgh, up through parts of Bradford, Pennsylvania. This is a couple hours before noon here. So we start to solidify that line. Take a look. It really starts to take shape around noon here across parts of central Pennsylvania, western New York. And as we put this further into motion, look at this. This is a pretty good squall line by this point. And you see these individual supercells trying to form out ahead of this. This is afternoon. So as we head throughout the afternoon, take a look at this. This is quite a mess. And this is a pretty solid squall line. Damaging wind, large hail, and still supercell development out ahead of this main line. Could be a major problem and component as we head into early to mid-afternoon here during peak heating time of the day, moving through Binghamton there, and then into the eastern Catskills. So the, this solution's a little bit slower, and I favor this solution a little bit more so than the NAM 3 kilometer. But the NAM 3 kilometer has the right idea as well. Take a look at that squall line into early evening here, the Hudson Valley, New York City, parts of Long Island, into western New England here, even the southern Adirondacks getting in on the act here and take a look at pivots to the northeast by this time thankfully all the severe weather will be pretty much gone at this point and we continue to move it through and it pivots across the northeast into southeast canada so convective available potential energy for your monday so we're starting out look at that that pretty develops as the daytime heating that's the sun at work on the surface look at this we start to become very unstable pretty quickly here across much of New York, Pennsylvania, all the way down to Virginia and into western New England here. See some of these values between 1,000 and 2,000 here. Um, so we're going to have some values that are pretty supportive just around noon here. And look at how that blossoms. We go above 2,000 places like Binghamton here into Wilkes-Barre, Scranton. And look at this. This is uh, the eastern Catskills here, Albany area. Anywhere you see these oranges and yellows, you're going to be exceeding you know, right around 2,000, 2,500 joules per kilogram here. So this is a lot of instability. It doesn't start to pull back and shut off here until about, you know, later in the evening here across parts of upstate New York. And then finally, as the low heads east, that pretty much tapers off. So as we head into the rapid refresh model, let's see what that's showing for the convective available potential energy as we head into Monday here. So there's the morning. But look at this. We rapidly intensify this cape here along this cold front here. You can see this is right around the noon hour. In excess of two to 2,500 here, Elmira down to Williamsburg, uh, just east of State College here, Harrisburg area. So we're really getting in on the act here of some stronger to severe thunderstorms. And these have a lot of fuel to add to these thunderstorms here. So we're going to have explosive development 
and you're not really used to this sort of thing in upstate New York into Pennsylvania, this kind of, you know, explosive development. And the significant tornado parameter, here we go. This is what I wanted to show you. This is pretty high for this far north here. Even though we're only seeing values of between 0.5 and 1 point, there's some 1.0s here into parts of central, north central Pennsylvania here. That is pretty significant this far north. So some of these storms could rotate. And as we put this into motion, see how, let me back up just a frame there. See how we have this uh, steep gradient here? This is right around noon, 1, 2 p.m. time frame here. Binghamton, Syracuse, down especially Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, just east of Williamsport, uh, Harrisburg area, uh, Baltimore, D.C. This is the time frame where we could be approaching 1 in some of these darker gray uh, shading here. So as this heads throughout the afternoon, that shifts into eastern Pennsylvania, eastern New York, and New Jersey, Delmarva Peninsula. You can see this lining up here as we head into mid to late afternoon. So that's not good news here. Look at that, New Jersey. We have values above 1 by this point, 21Z. That is not a good thing late afternoon, early evening here. And then thankfully, that tapers off pretty quickly. So significant tornado parameter here on the NAM 3 kilometer. Let's take a look. Look at these values here in northeast Pennsylvania. This is right around noon, 1 p.m. Look at this exceeding 1 just south of Binghamton, New York, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, Philadelphia, Baltimore and DC look at these locations we're going to be even close to Utica New York up here we're going to see some values approaching one here on the significant tornado parameter and look at this right around Binghamton this is heading into 1 2 3 p.m. here this is a problem Albany look at this just east of Wilkes-Barre Scranton right around Mount Pocono there's going to be some problems here some of these storms are going to etch out some tornadoes here and during the day on Monday, let's take a look at supercell parameters here. Yeah, this is peaking right around noon, 1, 2 p.m. here. Uh, this is where the supercell parameter surface base become much more significant as we head, you know, towards four, five, six, seven values here. Take a look at that. So, you know, is that's, yeah, the northern end of this line. Initially, that's where we'll really start to see some of these supercells take hold in upstate New York. So, you know, early afternoon into mid-afternoon is going to be a real problem here, especially in parts of upstate New York, northeast Pennsylvania, northern New Jersey here. All right, and Robert Stone, he is in the Stony Brook area near Dansville, New York. Take a look at these beautiful waterfalls within the park. This is a very beautiful park. I've actually been here myself. And it's actually, take a look at the, all the water. There's a lot of water this time of year flowing down these waterfalls, and it makes them very spectacular. Nice captures there, Robert. And taking a look at uh, continued nice, there's green vegetation here in Stony Brook uh, near Dansville, uh, New York, the park here. Take a look at the waterfalls here off in the distance. Nice captures there, Robert. Looking like a beautiful day. And take a look there down the hill, the nice waterfall that he's capturing there at Stony Brook, Dansville, New York. Take a look at that. Very nice captures there, Robert. As usual, it's a very beautiful day on this little, nice mid-May day. Extended outlook for my hometown viewers. Being to Scranton's upper Susquehanna region of upstate New York and northeast Pennsylvania, Monday through Friday. Monday, we're going to have to get through. That's going to be the worst day of the week with damaging wind, large hail, isolated tornadoes, microburst potential with any of these thunderstorms that form between 2 p.m. and 10 p.m. We've got a vigorous cold front moving in from the west, and it's going to cause a tremendous amount of thunderstorm development Friday, or Monday afternoon into Monday evening. So we're going to be looking at the possibility here of a tremendous amount of thunderstorm action uh, going into 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. So keep an eye to the skies. Uh, heed those watches or warnings that are issued definitely probably one of our biggest chances we've seen in quite some time for the Binghamton and Wilkes-Barre Scranton areas so watch out for that picking up a half an inch but locally higher in some of those even heavier thunderstorms Tuesday we've got a chance of a morning shower but we turn windier cooler 66 Wednesday Thursday Friday turning much sunnier and look at that we start a heat wave by Friday will be highs in the upper 80s and off the screen for your weekend, we could be into the 90s by next weekend. And as always, thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern and Hurricane Northeastern. Don't forget to go over to my hurricane page at Hurricane Northeastern over on Facebook. Also Media Mark, also Weather Northeastern. Also Twitter at Weather Eastern. And also MediaMark.com, WeatherNorthEastern.com. 
As always, don't forget there is a link to my 2022 Hurricane Outlook down below in the description if you haven't watched it already and there's a link at the end of this video as well.